for men, our priority is to be able to be of a value to our community, to our families, to our wives, to, ha to have our own self-respect and to have the respect of other men and to have respect of the women in our lives. To a man, when a man feels respected, a man feels loved. Uh, you may love a man, love a man, love a man. Say You may say, I love him, but I don't respect him. Guess what? If you're one of those women that say, well, I love him, but I don't really respect him, you don't love him. You don't love him on any kind of terms that he could understand. Your love will fall beside the wayside if it is without respect. If you cannot respect and honor a man, then you can then whatever it is that you're calling love, he doesn't call that love. He doesn't experience it as love. It doesn't matter to him as much as your respect and your honor. Uh, he may have some kind of feeling about it, but when it hits home, when it goes ding, when it, when it sounds off in his nervous system and he resonates and he stands up and he feels taller and stronger and more self-empowered uh, because you respect him and because you honored him. And so in the Women Only Workshop, one of the things that we teach women, one of the things that... Uh, that is so vital and that so many women are missing is they have lost their ability to truly understand and maybe well I say they lost their ability maybe they never did in the first place never maybe they never did understand men and how simple and elegant they are and um, how noble they are at their core and so they've never really respected or honored men and I'm not making excuses for men who have acted in a dishonorable and disrespectful way. I'm not making any excuses about that, okay? I'm saying that if you want to be loved and cherished by a man, then you have to find that part of yourself and that part of him that you can honor and respect. And sometimes, let's tell the truth. Sometimes you don't feel respect, but you can always show respect. There are people who I can literally say, I don't respect them. I don't have any feelings of respect towards them. However, I can show them respect. When I meet them, I'm cordial with them. I, I'm polite. I act in a respectful manner. In other words, I show my respect. What allows me to do that is not a sense of being false. On the contrary, what allows me to show respect to another man is to realize that like me, and me like him, like me, this man may be just doing the best he can with, what he's, with how his father raised him, with how his culture has raised him, with how his woman and his children have treated him. Uh, maybe he's just doing the best he can and whether or not I feel the feelings of respect is my problem, not his. It, I shouldn't make it his problem, okay? He's got problems of his own. I got problems of my own. If you can't respect me, that's your problem, okay? If you can't show me respect, that's, then, it become, then your problem becomes my problem. So there's a... A sense of discipline and rigor that is required that normally most mm, most people don't ever look at that they they only look at their feelings they check in with their feelings and they go well if I don't feel respect then I don't I'm not going to be respectful or show respect or a man might check in with his feelings and go well if I don't feel the love then how can I say I love her what you want to look at is that loving and respecting are something that you must generate. It's not something that if you just sit back and wait, it will come to you. It may come to you once in a lifetime. It may never come to you. Those feelings of love and respect and honor, 
that lift and ennobleize the human spirit, those come around by accident sometimes every once in a while. I'm not talking about those accidental feelings where you accidentally fell in love or you accidentally had a sense of honor and respect towards someone. I'm talking about uh, actually causing that in your own life, literally generating it in your own life, saying, I'm going to be the source of love. I'm going to be the source of respect. I'm going to be the source of honor. How do you do that? Well, you take a stand. It's in your speaking. It's in the way you behave. It's in the way you hold yourself. It's in the way you view yourself. It's also very fundamentally and importantly in the way that you deal with your own self. You cannot be disrespectful to yourself and then expect to turn around and respect and love and cherish other people. You cannot give to others what you can't give to yourself. You can't give to others what you can't receive for yourself. You can't receive for yourself what you feel that you don't deserve. If you feel that you don't deserve love, respect, and honor, if you feel that you don't re deserve to be cherished, then how would you ever love and respect yourself and how would you ever love and respect somebody else? So those of you who are mm, walking a, a, an inauthentic line uh, with reality, if you're, if, you're, if you're pretending that you love, if you're pretending that you respect, if you're res pretending that you honor yourself, but deep down inside on your most personal level, when you're alone with yourself, you're talking trash to yourself, you're, you're uh, mm, lying to yourself, you're, you're abusing your body. You know, we abuse our bodies in a dozen ways. We don't get enough sleep, we eat too much fats and carbs and sugars and, and uh, uh, we, dis we, we destroy ourselves physically with the foods we eat and the drugs we take and the toxins that we ingest or the things that we drink or smoke and then we ex and, and the pills we, we, we pop that, that actually alter your mood, that alter the way your brain processes reality, that alter your nervous system so that you can't feel certain things that you're feeling or that you don't know certain things that you're knowing or that you don't behave in certain ways that you feel like behaving. Uh, all of those things that are mood altering or mind altering drugs are a, a profound way that we become more and more illusioned as a race, more and more illusioned as, uh, as a species, uh, such that we no longer have a way of getting in touch with ourselves. We no longer have a way of, of authentically being alone with ourselves and actually taking into account who we really are, who we are in relationship more profoundly, like I said, to ourselves, and then to others. Who am I in relationship to one other person? And then maybe two or three other people, like a family or a group, a group of friends, or to a larger group of people like a culture or a tribe or a, uh, uh, a city, a community, uh, or a larger group of people like a nation or a country, or a larger group of people like the world, or even larger like the universe or God. So how can you be related to all of those different levels? And all of those levels are you. Each one of those levels is an expression of you.